Typically and traditionally, people think of the disciplines as discrete and separate, and yet the four of you have managed to take the book software <laughs> and create a curriculum that culminated with these wonderful projects today. How did you do that? I don't understand anything you just said. <laughs> He's really smart. We're a, we're a really close team that works together really well, and we are always in and out of each other's rooms like it's our job, because it is. And um, it's really easy for me to know what Miss O'Mara is doing, because we talk to each other every single day, which is really easy, because Brett's always in our room, and we always go talk to Mr. Bennett. And so it's just constant communication, and what are you doing, and oh, that connects with what I'm doing, so let's figure something out. I think the source material too was really well suited for this particular kind of thing because as a math teacher I didn't have a difficult time finding math connections to the literature. Um, and those social studies connections bled into my math connections, which also bled into lots of language arts kinds of standards and, mm -hmm. and objectives. And it all, the, the source material was really great for this kind of sort of interdisciplinary project. Yeah, the subject matter really lends itself to a lot of the social issues we talk about in social studies. So it was really awesome and easy to integrate that between uh, not only social studies, but with stuff they're doing in English and in math also. Ms. O'Mara, some of those issues in the software that uh, translate so well into 2011, what are they? Uh, well, one thing that uh, we talked about with the seventh graders and were, uh, the, was the relationship between slavery on Orbis because the Nundicks come in as slaves, you know? And then we also talked about, we're studying the Civil War in our class, so we talked about how those compare and contrast. Um, and the, you, you have social justice issues, like is slavery right? How do they feel about slavery? And that still goes on today because even though it's a fact that we don't like to admit, there are still forms of slavery in this world. Um, so it's a, it's, it's a wonderful thing so they can connect it not only to the past, but things they're dealing with today. Any other um, comments you'd like to make? Kids love the book. They're into it. I had a student say, Miss Inger, someone just died? This is getting good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they like it. Uh, you come into my room at any given time and you'll hear a pin drop for 45 minutes when my kids are reading and filling out their lit circle roll sheets. Silence with middle schoolers. So that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty on books, unbelievable. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And getting them to work on these projects projects not only for English but for the other um, subjects also was not like grueling procedure like okay guys you have to do this they once we explained what we asked what we wanted them to do they were like all right they were so excited about it so it, it worked out really well mm -hmm. now of course doing this integrated uh, transdisciplinary unit there's no way you could meet the state standards or the national common core <laughs> standards-based. Everything in here is standards-based, I think, so. Wow. And not only English language arts, but math and social studies? Uh, with our math standards, we went a little broader because seventh and eighth grade math is a little bit higher order. We are looking at pre-algebra concepts and geometrical concepts oh my that, gosh. that mostly uh, don't tie directly into the book. But I went with some of the bigger strands uh, and bigger concepts like systematic listing when we were talking about the different time periods on Orbis and how their calendar and their day kind of compares to ours. So it's a, a bigger idea in math and we also talked about some, some monetary issues with budgeting. They're making a certain amount of chits per day. Um, just some basic problem solving skills were easy to integrate using the book. There are some wonderful projects on both of those, both the Orbesian calendar and also Orbesian currency that show some pretty sophisticated, um, oh, I, I would call it iconography. Yeah, I think that's an accurate way to describe it. They did a fantastic job of thinking creatively about that different calendar. What would it look like to an, an alien's mind as opposed to our mind? Uh, how would they represent it? And representation, of course, in mathematics is, is huge. That's what mathematics is about, so kids did a great job with that. Closing thoughts before the parents come and dump the, the thing of Gatorade on you? <laughs> <laughs> it was a great gift to be able to have this book. It was a great gift. Yeah, so. absolutely. Where did, now, how did you acquire the books? <laughs> they fell. 
Um, <laughs> kids need up. to read. <laughs> Helped us out with this, and uh, and it's, it's a series of four. And I have students asking, "Is there a second one?" And then some kids are reading the second one and say, "Is there a third one?" And so. Uh, I think that in and of itself speaks multitudes when you have kids asking you more about something that we started in class. So. Could the kids need to read representatives join the group? <laughs> Come, go ahead. <laughs> I'll sneak down here. And if you, the yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if in each each person in the group would introduce herself or himself. My name is Debbie Brown and I am the development director of Crits Need to Read. And I'm David Bennett. I'm the 7th and 8th grade math teacher. I'm Brett Isaacson. I have one 7th grade social studies class and then I have learning lab. Andrea Inger, English language arts for 7th and 8th grade. Shannon O'Mara, social studies 7th and 8th grade. Denise Gary, executive director of Kids Need to Read. Now, um... <laughs> Ms. Gary, a lot of this has, has uh, flowed from your grant writing and the literacy programs you're designing with the help of the folks at ASU Prep Academy. Could you speak to that for a moment? Well, we are very grateful to ASU, which I'm pointing this way because the one holding the camera and asking the questions <laughs> is our partner at ASU. He is also the chairman of Kids Need to Read, James Blasingame. So. Go that wasn't what I asked you. <laughs> but, I had to give credit to you. But anyway, yes, we are, we are got together and decided we really wanted to make sure that our books have a huge impact. And we have this desire to work with middle school because we feel that's the bottleneck when kids start losing an interest in reading and start uh, losing interest even in their future and that's kind of where they start dropping out of school ninth grade is the big dropout year and because we're one of the only literacy organizations that serve older children uh, we that's really become a niche for us and we're really having a big success with our books in uh, interesting middle school kids but we wanted to go further and have a greater impact by developing curriculum or after school classes and such for this age. And this is where it was so important for us to partner with ASU uh, educators so that we could combine our books with great curriculum and with the teachers here at ASU Preparatory Academy who have also, well, they're really contributing to the development of this curriculum. And we hope one day to, um, to be able to have that spread you know within the community the state and the nation we really feel like if we could come up with something very innovative and very exciting and very engaging for the children we really feel like we can have a greater impact on literacy rates than than has been done by any other literacy organization in this country and uh, that's our goal that's what we're here for and that's to help the children of this country there's just not enough being done uh, her literacy rates in this country were, were not, they're not rising, they're falling, and the stats are all showing that, and we have to do something about it. Not just kids need to read, but everyone. So that's what we're doing together. Now I'd like for everyone to join in a cheer, which I will teach you, <laughs> and it goes cheers. like this. One, two, three, four, what do you think those books are for? Read them, read them, read, read, read. <laughs> are you ready? That's really good. Okay, it goes like this. Okay. One, two, three, four. What do you think those books are for? Read them. Read them. Oh. Read, oh. read, read, read. Okay, 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 are you ready? Are we doing like a... Are we doing like a... Yes! Yes! Let's go the way. Are you ready? Yes. This other armor. Yeah. No, we gotta do this. On three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. What do you think those books are for? Read them. Read them. Read, read, read! read. read. <laughs>